All right, just finished uh, installing the wall cabinets in the bathroom upstairs, crown molding and all that, which was a little tedious. It's been a while since I've done crown, but it's coming back to me. And next I'm going to start doing a full inspection of our Mr. Cool Universal HVAC systems we installed over a year ago, like well over a year ago. And we haven't fired them up yet. We haven't tested them because we have no power. So now that we've got our final inspection finished, I'm waiting on our certificate of occupancy. I'm waiting on that inspection to be sent over to the power company, which should happen sometime today. And we can get the guys out here to set our meter and turn up our permanent power. So in preparation of that, like I said, I'm gonna do an inspection of the HVAC, make sure everything looks right. So that when the power comes on, we can fire it up, set the thermostats, all that happy stuff. And I'll take you through that because I know I had said I wanted to do a couple videos on the Mr. Cool system. Uh, it's an inverter driven, sort of like a soft start, very efficient uh, two slash three ton unit. I have an upstairs unit in the attic, a downstairs unit in the basement. So we're gonna put two smart thermostats on, go through it all. Um, and then we'll do sort of a little follow up uh, see how well it cools because we're getting into the warm season haven't had any terrible humidity yet but this is may 12th and it's coming so i think said next week we're going to be in the 90s it's going to be just in time get this stuff fired up make sure we can control the humidity and i'm going to do an update like i said to uh, let you know how it performs then we'll do another update in uh, the winter time when it gets cool and we uh, will try it out to see how well it heats i'm excited to see what we uh, what we're in for so here we are under the back porch. These are the Mr. Cool outdoor units. All right, I got the cover off and here's the control board. Not much you really need to do with this. Um, took a picture of how it's all wired because I didn't wire this. I paid a guy to do it. But you need to know what color wire goes to what terminal so that you can hook up your thermostat correctly inside. This is the power, leg one, leg two, and ground. That's pretty much all there is to that. And if you use the pre-charged line sets, which are those, like I said, we had this installed about a year ago and we never turned on the lines because we didn't want to lose any um, fluid or whatever, any gas. Now I'm going to turn these on on both units, and then on the other end, in each of the air handlers. All right, I'm gonna try and film this with one hand and wrench with the other. The, these caps that are marked with the red paint are what you wanna remove so that you have access to the valve. And there's a hex, Let's see if I can get in there. The uh, camera hates me but there's a hex uh, valve in there. Now you turn this to the left. And fully open it. Turn it until it stops. All right. And then put the cap back on. Tighten. That's all there is to it. Now I'm going to do the other unit and go inside and do the air handlers. Another thing, uh, if you have one of these, it took me a minute to figure out how you actually get this cover off. And so I figured it out. You take out this screw. Got to take out that screw right there and that screw right there. And then it uh, drops down. Okay, I'm at the basement air handler now. Do the same procedure. That was on there. Open the small valve, hex wrench. This is so easy for a DIY person to install a complete system. 
by themselves. You don't have to have an HVAC license. You don't have to pull vacuum. You don't have to do mess with refrigerant. It's like freaking easy and awesome. Now you can install these with conventional line sets. But you don't have to. And the A-coil that's inside here is pre-charged as well. So basically everything's pre-charged. You just hook it all up and open the valves and it's got the right amount of refrigerant and vacuum and everything. It's a pretty ingenious little invention, I think. All right. Replace the caps. And that's it. So <clears throat> I just have to do the one in the attic and I'm done. Only other thing left is to set the thermostats on the wall, wire them up. Make sure you do not turn the power on until after your thermostats are all wired up and hooked up. Then you can turn on the power, program your thermostat settings, and you're off to the races. When it comes to wiring a thermostat, whether it's to a brand new system or a replacement thermostat on an existing system, especially if you didn't, if you are not the one who wired the communication wire between the air handler and the outdoor unit and where the thermostat goes, I would not rely on any wire color designations or anything like that because wire color does not mean anything in this scenario. So you got to make sure you got the right colored wire to the right terminal depending on the system you're using. This is the outdoor unit of the system we're using and the indoor connection to the outdoor unit. So. Regardless of wire color, C goes to C, R goes to R, W1, B goes to OB, and Y to Y. Um, on the indoor unit, this is the Mr. Cool Universal uh, wiring. Yours will be different. So the thermostat wire to the indoor unit terminal, uh, this is the wiring diagram. Now, what I did was just take a picture of the wiring, the actual wiring terminal, on both the outdoor unit and the indoor unit. So you can see there, uh, Y is yellow, B is orange, W1 is white, R is red, C is blue, G is green. This is a Honeywell Smart Thermostat. And these are the five wires we're using. Red, green, white, orange, blue. K&N Lifetime air filters I will be using after the first month. See how they work. Flip this out, flip it over, plug it in. And now it's on. All right, let's go fire up the breakers. Other air handler and outdoor. Let's see. Home done. Next, cooling and heating. Heat pump. B wire. Okay, it's a quarter to eight. It is pretty hot in here because the sun comes in those windows during the sunset, you know, this time of day, and blasts us with heat. So, I just fired it up, and I'm gonna see 
how long it takes to uh, you know take it down from 82 to 75 there. I'm really liking these compressors. Inverter driven, they ramp up and ramp down. Super quiet. Love the form factor. So you can put them pretty close to the wall and you can put them underneath a deck or a porch as long as you've got the right clearances. I think it has to be like 18 inches. These are awesome. So we're gonna run them for, well, first we're gonna see how long it takes to cool that entire space from 82 to 75. Then I'm gonna run it for about a month and then sometime in around June, I'll report back on the quality of the cooling. So I had a problem and it was my fault, but it was actually their fault because their directions are not very clear for someone who's never done this. On the terminals for the communication wire, your outdoor unit runs to your indoor unit. And here you have a Y, which is the compressor contactor. And mine has that. It has the yellow wire going to the yellow wire on the air handler. But when you go to hook up the thermostat, this is the thermostat to the air handler. It says hook up all these wires, but don't, there's no wire for the ye yellow, for the compressor contactor. So I didn't plug it in. And that's why my uh, outside compressor wouldn't kick on. The air handler worked, the fan worked, everything else worked. So I went back, plugged in that wire, and the compressor kicked on. The directions should be much clearer than that because that's wrong. Make sure you plug in your yellow wire. Okay, it's been like two days since we fired up this Mr. Cool system. So far, I'm super impressed. Uh, the last house we lived in, the air conditioning ran a lot during the summer and used a whole lot of energy. It was the biggest draw and the biggest expense on our electric bill. So far, this thing has run maybe three hours total runtime since I fired it up 48 hours ago. Once it got the, the house to temperature, it just kind of maintains it. But when it does run, you can't hear it. Outside, it's super quiet. These thermostats work great. It tells you indoor temperature. Like right now, it's uh, 8.25 a.m. 73 degrees, so it doesn't have to run. And I attribute that to the super awesome insulation of insulated concrete forms. Once you get this place to temperature, it pretty much stays that way for 80% of the day. And if you need to, you know, during uh, maybe six, seven o'clock at night is when the sun goes down the, sort of that west direction and comes in these big windows and really starts to heat things up. But this, this manages it. I can't say enough good things about the system so far. It's a great DIY uh, HVAC system. If you need to do a complete house and you want a ducted system, that's a great option. They also make, you know, mini splits for, you know, single rooms. I know it's taken a long time for us to get this fired up since we installed it like a, well over a year ago or about a year ago. But you know, that's how long it takes to get things going. So now that we have permanent power, we've got temperature control, which is great because today it's supposed to be 90 degrees, our first 90 degree day of the summer of, for this year. So it couldn't have come at a better time. Um, and I'm glad to be able to like control the humidity in here because we have so much wood, brand new cabinets, all this, you know, the ceiling, everything shrinks well. Got to maintain your humidity in a, in a climate like that where you have a lot of wood. So Mr. Cool, Universal, thumbs up. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.